because uh, all of the topics in this, uh, uh, this, my talk is covered by most of the previous speakers. I'll go very fast. Uh, okay, so um, Elvad, um, as you heard uh, uh, from the beginning, uh, uh, improved survival of the patients, uh, end-stage heart failure patients, but still they are um, a little behind the transplantation survival and because of the, it's because of the complications. So let's see, uh, survival rate of LVAD is this, um, uh, it became much improved since the, uh, the first generation LVADs. Uh, about four years survival is 55%, but uh, compared to transplantation, which is a uh, five year survival rate is about 75%, it's a little bit less but it's uh, continuously improving. Uh, and the uh, cause of mortality in LVAD is uh, in the uh, uh, high in the uh, post-operative period, uh, which is infection and uh, neurological complication and multi-organ failure, and uh, right heart failure is the most highest. And uh, the rest of the period, most of them are uh, uh, um, remained. Uh, these are the uh, risk factors for the cause of the uh, uh, mortality after LVAD implantation, which is old age, um, concomitant surgery, IVAD, and uh, low intermax criteria, and uh, congenital heart disease, and high creatinine, uh, yeah, and liver failure, um, et cetera. Um, so, adverse events, uh, you heard a lot about that this afternoon. Uh, early period, uh, in first three months, are bleeding and infection. And uh, after three months, uh, uh, bleeding and infection is the most common uh, adverse events. Um, and uh, this uh, recent uh, IMAX uh, report uh, uh, compared actual flow pump and centrifugal pump, and um, most of the uh, adverse effects was uh, less in centrifugal pump compared to actual pump. Okay. And um, uh, heart rate two is uh, actual pump. Uh, uh, most popular one bef uh, until now, and HVAD is centrifugal pump. And uh, uh, when they when compare the survival, the survival rate are uh, quite similar. But uh, uh, some reports uh, had uh, 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 reported uh, that the uh, centrifugal pump, which is HVAD, is have a little more stroke and infection rate compared to actual pump. But uh, uh, um, the Momentum 3 trial was uh, published last March, large, last April, and uh, the Momentum 3 trial compared uh, heart made 2, which is actual, and um, uh, fully levitated um, magnet magnetic centrifugal pump uh, which is heart rate three. And um, heart rate three compared to heart rate two had a uh, better uh, composite endpoint, which is uh, uh, um, uh, major stroke free survival and um, no need to uh, replace the pump in two years. Uh, century, uh, heart rate three had better outcome than uh, heart rate two. And uh, if we go into the more detail, um, heart rate three had much less pump thrombosis compared to heart rate two, and uh, a much, uh, less disabling stroke, and less bleeding. Okay, the same one. So heart rate three LVAD is a new one. Um, we don't have it in Korea yet, but it's a continu centrifugal pump, continuous centrifugal pump like HVAT, but a little bit different, which is fully levitated, uh, that does not require hydrodynamic or mechanical bearings. And um, they have large, um, large uh, <laughs> uh, uh, interval between the two uh, 
uh, housings, and so they, they have less shear stress, and they can make uh, artificial volatility to reduce blood stasis and minimize thrombosis, and it is approved by US FDA for BTT and DT in 2018. Okay, bad complications are, uh, can divide it into uh, three categories, which is pump-related and pump and patient interface and patient-related. Infection is uh, a universal <laughs> complication. It's uh, second most complication uh, and second most cause of death uh, in uh, LVAD. Um, it can divide it into superficial driveline infection and pump pocket infection and bloodstream infection, which the organisms are mostly uh, uh, skin uh, habitants. Uh, uh, when infected, um, uh, Thirty percent of them are uh, pa of patients suffer by three years of support. So, and um, uh, when you are once infected, um, it, it costs a long courses of antibiotics or surgical debris monks and device replacement. So these are risk factors, uh, uh, patient risk factors, and but there's some um, uh, point that surgical uh, technique can improve the. Uh, complication rate, and you need to care the wound uh, carefully after implantation. And bleeding, uh, it's the most common complication. Uh, it has multifactorial pathogenesis, like um, patient age and hepatic dysfunction, RV dysfunction, and uh, most of all, uh, most of all, uh, the uh, continuous flow pump uh, develop a uh, bone-deliverant disease, as you heard uh, by Dr. Eisen, and um, uh, continuous pump um, uh, frequently makes angiodysplasia, and it make it's the pri it most of the time is the primary source of bleeding. And if bleeding uh, complication develops, it's uh, it increases the risk of device thrombosis as well, and then increases mortality. So all those things are connected. Uh, treatment, treatment method is not uh, standardized yet. Uh, it's institution specific. But identification of bleeding focus, including upper and lower GI uh, endoscopy, and video capsule endoscopy, uh, and lowering anticoagulation, and supportive care are universal. And octreotide is a uh, uh, somatostatin analog, which can, which is uh, um, which can be used as secondary prophylaxis of GI bleeding. And otherwise, uh, these drugs are uh, tried uh, to stop uh, bleeding. Uh, in uh, which, uh, which, which is not controlled by uh, um, a standard care. And acquired von Willebrand disease, you heard that, because of the shear stress uh, von Willebrand factor, which, require, uh, which is important in uh, di uh, blood stasis, uh, uh, is uh, malfunctioning and the uh, multimoles are decreased and it causes bleeding. And pump thrombosis is uh, one of the disastrous complications as well. Um, it has high mortality, morbidity, and uh, it can be a precursor of thromboembolic stroke or systemic stroke, uh, systemic embolism. Um, it has uh, a lot of risk factors and Diagnosis not it, that easy always, and management is very uh, uh, hard. Uh, anyway, once uh, you develop pump thrombosis, the prognosis is very poor. Um, oh, okay. Uh, and uh, in 2014, uh, a, a group in the U.S. Uh, uh, reported that the pump thrombosis rate increased in, uh, since 2011. Uh, but, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, doctors uh, were uh, um, uh, investing the cause, and uh, some of them reported, uh, 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 some of them had a trial, which is prevent trial, and they, uh, they tried all the uh, strict 
uh, criteria and surgically or uh, medically uh, to improve, uh, to decrease the pump thrombosis rate. And it seems, it seems to be decreasing the pump thrombosis rate from uh, around 3.6%. But fortunately, um, um, uh, uh, HeartMate 3, uh, by Momentum 3 trial, we have a better uh, pump. We can have better pump, uh, which has a very low rate of pump thrombosis. And uh, neurological complication is one of the uh, uh, um, very problematic complication. Once it develops its high mortality, morbidity, low quality of life, uh, and it, it, if you are on BTT, you can't go on to transplantation uh, for, um, most of the time. Uh, it has multifactorial pathogenesis. 50% is ischemic and 50% is hemorrhagic. Uh, hemorrhagic complication uh, is more uh, worse survival rate than ischemic. Uh, once you develop a stroke, 13% have second stroke. And um, uh, if you are on BTT, neurological complication makes you uh, uh, out of list, can make you out of list. So management, as Dr. Shelley uh, said, uh, BP control is important, INR monitoring important, and uh, some of these methods can be done. And in acute ischemic stroke, uh, endovascular therapy rather than thrombolysis is preferred because of high risk of hemorrhagic transformation. And because there is a device in your body, you have to always think about uh, secondary prophylaxis after acute management. And you have to start um, antithrombotics or anticoagulation as soon as possible. So um, this is not a um, guideline, but uh, it's a proposed, proposed by uh, some center. and. Uh, uh, they start aspirin as soon as possible uh, if there is no active hemorrhage, and they start orphan as soon as possible if they have a minor uh, in, uh, infection. And acute hemorrhagic stroke, they reduce BP and reverse coagulopathy by desmopressin and platelet and FFP, PCC transfusion. And, but most of the time, they are very um, grave prognosis. And uh, these are... Okay, I'll pass by. And RV dysfunction, you heard about it. Um, you can develop RV dysfunction after LBOD implantation. Uh, you, uh, there's uh, um, increased preload and afterload. Uh, those makes RV vulnerable to failure after transplantation. Once RV failure develops, the prognosis is very poor. Uh, and uh, it's very hard to find uh, preoperatively the risk factors for RV dysfunction. Um, once the RV dysfunction develops, you have to optimize the uh, preload and afterload, and you can use inotropics and manage arrhythmias. But uh, if the failure continues, you have to think about RVAD uh, and uh, even transplantation. Okay, this is it. Thank you so much.